हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो आई बी डिस्कसिंग सी एस टू बी पेपर ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो आई बी डिस्कसिंग द एंटायर कोड्स ऑफ द पेपर वट एवर इज रिक्वायर्ड सम कमेंट्स आई डिस्कस नाउ कमेंट्स कैन वेरी फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट टू स्टूडेंट ऑब्वियसली मे बी योर कमेंट इज राइट एंड आंसर्स आर जस्ट एन इंडिकेशन ऑफ हाउ योर द कोड्स आर जस्ट एन इंडिकेशन एनी अदर कोड विच इज करेक्ट मे बी एक्सेप्टेबल बाई द इंस्टीट्यूट सो डो नॉट थिंक दैट दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर ओनली द फाइनल आंसर यू नो वंस द आई एफ ओ ए टेक्स आउट इट सोल्यूशन बट येस दीज आर अ इंडिकेशन सो यू डो नॉट रिलाई फुल्ली ऑन दीज आंसर्स बट येस यू कैन चेक योर आंसर्स टू सम एक्सटेंड थ्रू दीज क्वेश्चन वन एंड एक्चुअली इज इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग द असिमटोटिक बिहेवियर ऑफ द सैम्पल ऑटो को रिलेशन फंक्शन टू टू टाइम सीरीज मॉडल जनरेट यूजिंग अ रैंडम नंबर जनरेटर अ सीर ऑफ नाइन सिक्सटी सेवन अमिलेटेड सीक्वेंस ऑफ एन इक्वल्स टू Yeah, uh, two hundred observations for first order moving average process with parameter beta one is equals to point four. Assuming the simulated values to the vector called y m a. So they have told us which vector to store in. So z dot c has been stored and y m a is equals to arima dot sim n equals to two hundred and list is m a, which has been told to us. Okay, nothing else is said. <coughs> Next is generate using a random number generator. A a seed of nine sixty seven. Uh, simulated sequence of n equals to 200 or is for first order regressive models with parameter alpha equals to 1 and uh, <coughs> 0.5 assigning the simulated values to a vector called y a r so this is uh, told to this vector now you can again do the same thing set dot c and y as arima dot c n equals to 200 and list is equals to a r comma 0.45 Plot on four separate graphs the sample autocorrelation function and sample partial autocorrelation function for each of the two time series model. So they have been told to calculate the values of the partial autocorrelation model, uh, the graph of these models. So first I'll plot. So just my plot A C F. So if you see, this is the plot of A C F of Y M A. then we have the pacf of yma then we have the acf of yar and then you have the pacf of yr so all these are different okay <coughs> plot now comment on the general features of the plots in part 3 with reference to whether they are consistent with the theoretical behavior corresponding to the true models now if you see let's start with the first one if i go with Y M A, so it was said it's an M A function. So for M A, we know for moving averages that uh, the moving average M A graph, A C F of M A graph will cut uh, for M A. So here you can see it is cutting after lag one. So yes, it is a, a M A one process. It is satisfying this. For P A C F, it you can see there are big fluctuations, which is possible in a, uh, a moving average series. For a A C F of Y A R, uh, it is cutting. Though for uh, y, uh, auto regressive process, we see PACF, and for PACF, you can see that again it is cutting off mostly after uh, lag one, so it is an AR one process. Okay, so all the values. This is what I interpret in the comments. The ACF function in R can also provide <coughs> provide a vector output of the sample ACF values with component i giving the sample ACF at lag i minus n. Provided the plot argument of the function is set to false, determine the numerical values of the sample ACF at lag two for each of the two time series models y m a and y a r. So we have to calculate the ACF at lag two. So this is ACF will nothing be but it will be this function only. <coughs> Just copy this. <coughs> And I'll just uh, give an argument of plot equals to false. <coughs> okay, and I'll store this in the value a, and then I'll just a dollar ACF. Now we need it for lag two. If I write two, it will give me at uh, one since it's said in the question. So I have to write three for getting at lag two. So this is the uh, ACF value for Y M A, and similarly the ACF value for Y A R. You can do this as storing this as B, setting plot equals to false. <coughs> and then B dollar ACF of 
थ्री तो दीज आर द टू वैल्यूज ऑफ दी टू फंक्शन वाई एम एंड वाई आर कंस्ट्रक्ट आर कोड सच दैट फर्स्ट सेट ऑफ रैंडम नंबर जनरेटर सेट ऑफ सी सो फी टू अगेन सेट डॉट सी नाइन सिक्सटी सेवन देन जनरेट थाउजेंड रैंडम वैक्टर्स ऑफ लेंथ एन इक्वल टू टू हंड्रेड फॉर ईच ऑफ द टू मॉडल सो फॉर ईच मॉडल वी नीड टू क्रिएट अ वैक्टर ऑफ थाउजेंड वैल्यूज एंड ईच थाउजेंड वैल्यू शुड कंटेन अ वैल्यू ऑफ टू हंड्रेड ओके एंड असाइन द वैल्यूज ऑफ द सैम्पल ए सी एफ एट लैक टू फॉर ईच रैंडम वैक्टर इन दिस सो इफ यू सी आई फर्स्ट क्रिएटेड एन ए सी एफ टू एम ए न्यूमेरिक ऑफ थाउजेंड विच इज एन एम टी आर ए नो आई हैव टू रन अ लूप फॉर आई इन वन टू लेंथ ऑफ दिस विच इज इक्वल टू थाउजेंड इफ यू सी इट सेट वाई एम ए इज इक्वल टू अरिमा डॉट सिम एन इज इक्वल टू टू हंड्रेड लिस्ट ऑफ एम ए इज इक्वल टू दिस वी हैड ऑलरेडी रन इन द बिगिनिंग एंड देन वाई एम ए ए सी एफ दिस आई एम स्टोरिंग द ए सी एफ ऑफ दिस वैल्यू ए सी एफ वाई एम ए प्लॉट इक्वल टू फॉल्स एंड देन ए सी एफ टू एम ए का आई एथ पोजिशन विल भी वाई एम ए ए सी एफ डॉलर ए सी एफ का थर्ड पोजिशन एंड रिटर्न ए सी एफ टू एम ए सो दिस इज वन लूफ विच यू हैव टू रन टू गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ द एंटायर ए सी एफ टू एम ए ओके ऑल द वैल्यूज ऑफ दीज आर देर एंड देन सेकेंड वन ऑल्सो द सेम थिंग सेट डॉट सी ए सी एफ टू ए आर एंड द सेम लूफ ओनली विद द ए आर फंक्शन ओके एंड द नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज डिटरमाइन द मीन एंड वेरियंस ऑफ द टू वैक्टर्स ए सी एफ टू एम ए एंड ए सी एफ टू ए आर सो मीन ऑफ ए सी एफ टू एम ए मीन ऑफ ए सी एफ टू ए आर वेरियंस ऑफ ए सी एफ टू एम ए एंड मीन ऑफ ए सी एफ टू ए आर वेरियंस ऑफ ए सी एफ टू ए आर ओके सो दीज आर द टू फंक्शन एंड देन प्लॉट ऑन टू सेपरेट ग्राफ्स द हिस्टोग्राम ऑफ द टू वैक्टर्स ए सी एफ टू एम ए एंड ए सी एफ टू ए आर जनरेटेड इन पार्ट सिक्स ए सी एफ टू एम ए This is the histogram of ACF2, and this is the histogram of ACF2AR. And then comment on the results in part six and part uh, seven and part eight, <coughs> including whether they agree with the expected asymptotic behavior. So if you see asymptotic, asymptotic means the values will tend more to be zero. So if you see in uh, the part uh, the answers for both mean and variance, the values are close to zero. Here also values are close to zero. <coughs> Also for the histogram of ACF to MA, if you see, the values are more of uh, uh, into zero. So yes, they are more tending towards zero, and there are lesser values of other values. And here also, they are more uh, highest peak is at zero uh, frequency. So yes, they follow the asymptotic behavior. Okay. So this was first question, pretty direct question. There was nothing very tricky in this question. Question two, before answering this question, generate the vector x in R using the following code. So set dot c again. This question is this given to us, and x is equals to r e x p. This is also given to us. Retention limit uh, the vector x represents the gross claim sizes of thousand claims. Thousand claims have been generated. The payments are to be split between an insurance company and its reinsurance under an excess of loss reinsurance arrangement, with retention limit m is equals to four hundred. determine the proportion of claims that are fully covered by the insurer so covered by the insurer the first we need to calculate the claims which are covered by the insurer so y is numeric of 1000 y i have created again a p min of x comma m where there is reinsurance and proportion of claims which will be paid by the insurer is x wherever the x is less than equal to m divided by length of this was actually first part I did uh, the other part was the second part. Uh, just this. This is the first part. Length of x or length of x is less than equal to n. So yes, ninety eight point seven percent is covered by the insurer, and generate an additional vector y of the same length as x such that y represents the amount to be paid by the insurer for each component of x. So same length of x. I am taking numeric of thousand, and yes, y is p min of x comma m, which we all know. <coughs> generate an additional vector z which is of the same length as x such that x represent z represents the amount to be paid by the reinsurer so again z is numeric of 1000 and z is p max of 0 comma x minus m okay so this will give me the reinsurer and actually assumes that the underlying cross claims distribution follows an exponential distribution of some unknown rate lambda that actually needs to estimate uh, Lambda only using the claim amounts recorded in the vector y. So only the insurer's values you need to construct a R code that calculates the log likelihood as a function of the parameter lambda, given that claim amounts data in vector y. So I have taken f as a function of params. Negative log likelihood is equal to minus of sum of d e x p of y 
which is my y vector comma params 1 which is the only 1 and log equals to 2 log likelihood we need to calculate and return the negative log likelihood ok. Once this is there now we uh, know that for NLM function we need to give a starting and an end value starting value to the function so I have taken mean of y as a starting value we use follow the method of movements anything we can follow and a is NLM of f comma p. So, it giving me warning messages and then a is a dollar a lambda is a dollar estimate 1. So, this is the lambda value which I am getting ok. <coughs> determine the value uh, this uh, asking determine the value of lambda which is maximum is this lambda value ok. This was the last part direct question again very direct question yes question number 3 I found many of students were facing a problem just because this is a machine learning but uh, pretty much very easy direct question because IFO is already written what you have to do in the question. So, there was nothing uh, new which you had to <coughs> actually do. So, first is question 3. I have taken a set dot C. Uh, they have said an analyst is investigating a life insurance portfolio data set comprising of two variables x1 and x2 for 200 policy holders. The analyst is exploring whether the 200 policy holders can be divided into two clusters based on the two variables x1 and x2. Before answering this question generate the data set portfolio in R using the following code set dot C portfolio and x2 scale. So, they have given us this values you just need to run this code again. In the first stage of investigation, the analyst decides to assign the first 100 policy holders in the data set to cluster A and the remaining policy holders to uh, cluster B. So, if you run portfolio, you will see uh, there are 100, <coughs> you can see there are 200 values which we have generated for both. So, for 200 values, the first 100 has been given to the data set A and the second 100 has been given to the second remaining clusters has to be given to B ok. So, this is the process which has been followed. Construct a new column in the data set portfolio called group label stage 1 containing the policy holder clusters labels divine over. So, you have to first create group label stage 1. So, coming to group label stage 1. So, this is I have created portfolio dollar group label stage 1. So, this name was given. So, first uh, 100 values will get A and the second 100 values will get B ok. So, repeat A comma 100 and then repeat B comma 100 this if you create and now if you see head of portfolio see the so first values is there and the tail of portfolio last values will get B. So, this was what was said in the question very directly nothing of uh, something which is very difficult ok. Next is determine the coordinates x1 a, x2 a of the center of the cluster a and the coordinates of x1 b, x2 b of center of cluster b. So, I have taken out the clusters of center 1 and center 2. So, for center of a, center of a you see there are two values x1 and x2. So, for x1 I have taken the mean of the first uh, 1 to 100 values and the mean of x2 of 1 to 100 values. So, this gives the center of uh, a center 1 and center 2 is giving me the values of for x1 101 to 200 and x2 101 to 200. So, this is my uh, I need to run my x1 and x2 sorry. <coughs> These were my values for center 1 and center 2 ok. Now, construct a new column in the data set portfolio called distance A containing the Euclidean distances between the policy holders and the center of cluster A. So, we need to calculate the Euclidean distance from the between the center. So, first we need to write center of first position minus x1 is 1 is 200 square plus x uh, center uh, of second position containing the Euclidean distances between the policy holders and the uh, clusters uh, and the center of cluster A. So, yeah just center of cluster A is this center 1 comma 2 and these values will be there ok for uh, these two values you just need to do uh, S, uh, x2 minus x1 ka whole square min, uh, plus y2 minus y1 ka whole square and root over of this. So, this will give me a portfolio distance of A for both the portfolio if you see there the distances are coming ok. Now, next is construct a new column in the distance B containing the Euclidean distance with policy holder of center A. So, again here also you have to do these values x2 ka square uh, center 1 <coughs> again center 2 and center 2 ka second position 
and this ka square we are getting. So, distance A and distance B you are getting. Okay. Next is <coughs> the analyst now decides to update the cluster labels by assigning to each policy order the label of cluster whose center is the nearest according to the distances calculated in part 3 and part 4. Construct a new column in the data set portfolio called group label stage 2 containing the updated policy cluster labels. So, uh, we know k-means clustering is more uh, uh, obviously the distance which is closer you will get that value. So, obviously what I have done I have done an if else that if distance of A is less than distance of B then give A otherwise give B. So, whichever is the lesser distance will get its cluster labels directly I have done this. So, if you see now the new cluster labels are coming group label stage 1 and group label stage 2 values are coming. Okay. Now, they have said generate a 2 into 2 matrix showing the number of policy holders within each possible combinations of group label stage 1 and group label stage 2. For stage 1 we know it is 100 and 100. For stage 2 we need to calculate. So, if you see I have done a length of portfolio dollar group label stage 2 where group label uh, portfolio dollar group label stage 2 is equal to equal to A. So, this is giving me a value of 73 and length of portfolio dollar group label stage 2 uh, portfolio dollar group label stage 2 equal to equal to B. So, this is coming to 127. So, 100, 100, <coughs> 73 and 127. I am getting these values and then I am making a matrix that 100, 100, uh, 2, 2 dimensions list uh, C of actual comma predicted C of A comma B. And this gives me a value of this. So, if you see P looks like a matrix of this that uh, actual values of A was 100 predicted is 73, actual values of B was 100 predicted is 127. <coughs> then it is comment on the matrix generated uh, with reference to how the cluster labels have been changed. So, obviously you see that more of B has been predicted. So, more clusters are in B and there is in A. Okay. Plot the column X1 of the data set portfolio against the column X2 with x1 on the x axis and x2 on the y using two distinct colors to identify clusters A and clusters B according to the label group stage 2. Okay, so, I have to plot x1 and x2. Color I have given red and green. Label, see now I have used this label function where label is equal to portfolio dollar group label stage 2. So, according to this it will plot my values. It will color according to whichever cluster belongs to which cluster and main is equal to cluster equals to predicted value. So, this is how I will get the cluster. So, there is x1, here is x2 and different clusters are getting different values. Okay. The analyst decides to stop this decision, uh, stop at this stage and report group label stage 2 as a final set of cluster labels. Comment on this decision. I would say since it is only a one time, it, he has just tested once, he has not decided any. K means clustering value if you follow, it takes a lot of uh, iterations and then gives the best cluster. So, obviously, he should also have done the Thing, finding the best cluster and then proceeding forward. Okay, so this may be not the final set of clusters available. Okay, so very direct paper for CS to be. There was nothing. It everything was written in the question. What you had to do, you had to just understand what had to be done and write the codes. Thank you. <coughs>